Explorers stumbled upon a new underwater world, but little did they know, prehistoric creatures awaited them. The story kicks off 65 million years ago when a bunch of small reptiles were having a seaside meal. Out of the jungle, a Tyrannosaurus Rex suddenly appears, sending the creatures scattering in all directions in a bid to escape. Unfortunately, the T-Rex nabs one of them. Out of the blue, a massive megalodon rises from the water and effortlessly devours the dinosaur. Five years after the first film, Jonas Taylor is in intense training in the Mariana Trench, fighting environmental wrongs. He surfaces discreetly, takes photos of illegal waste dumping. Sneaking into a cabin, he captures crucial documents. In the room, a chatty macaw parrot's cries grab a man's attention. Jonas momentarily distracts that guy, then skillfully handles the other lawbreakers, dodging their attacks. But the ship's captain rushes onto the deck, demanding his men ensure Jonas doesn't leave alive. They find themselves stuck on cargo containers, with Jonas warning the crew of arrest before leaving abruptly. I'll see you in court, he shouts. The men doubt Jonas will survive, needing a challenging 300-kilometer swim to reach shore. Unfazed, Jonas continues. Soon, Mac, his friend, pilots an airplane above the ship. Jonas is saved as he boards through a hatch. They land, and Jonas hands over collected evidence to Mac. The scene shifts to the Oceanic Institute in China, where director Zhu Ming tests a new underwater suit granting incredible strength. This suit will undergo trials in the Mariana Trench. Zhu Ming's niece, Meng, reminds him not to be late for an evening event celebrating the Institute's 10th anniversary. During the event, Jonas and Mac arrive, and they meet Zhu Ming and Hilary Driscoll. The Institute's financier starts the evening with a speech, passing the mic to Zhu Ming, who introduces a huge female megalodon named Hai. She was found injured as a young one, and is now the only one raised in captivity, all thanks to the Oceanic Institute. Their work with Hai Yi has given them insights into megalodons and their habitats. Zhu Ming also expresses his gratitude to the investors whose contributions made it possible to develop the technology enabling people to breach the thermocline, the layer of frigid water that separates Hai's world from ours. This advancement now allows people to dive into the trench, which plunges over 6,000 meters below sea level. The following day, Jonas, who is now responsible for Meng, informs her that she can't join him on the dive into the trench at Deep Sea Station Mana 1 because of the considerable danger involved. Nevertheless, Meng persists in convincing Jonas that she can handle it. In response, he proposes that she go to Mana 1 and simply observe the dive from there. Security Officer Rias enters with urgent news. Juming is experimenting with the Megalodon. Juming asks, am I appetizing? Jonas tries to convince Juming that swimming with the Megalodon is risky, but Juming believes in a unique connection with Hiai and is determined to show how she responds to his commands. As Juming commands, the giant creature doesn't respond and quickly moves toward him, briefly vanishing. The Mana One team thinks the Megalodon swallowed him, but luckily, Juming reappears unhurt. He later tells Jonas that he has been acting strangely for the past week. Meanwhile, the Megalodon escapes its massive tank and heads for the Mariana Trench. Jonas, Meng, Juming, and the team go to Mana One. Jonas and Juming dive 7,600 meters deep to collect rocks and document species. Two subs descend, one with Jonas, Rias, and S and the other with Juming, Curtis, and Lance for monitoring. Engineer DJ oversees Mac and assistant stations at Mana 1. Soon Jonas notices that Mang has secretly sneaked on board one of the submarines. He's upset with his stepdaughter, thinking of canceling the mission. Suddenly, they see a megalodon approaching. It's Heiki, their team member. They speed toward the thermal climb to stop the creature. Unexpectedly, another megalodon, HEI, joins and Raya spots more wild megalodons nearby. Jumping suggests changing the dive plan to figure out what's gone wrong. Jess isn't thrilled about veering off course, but Jumping is determined to explore an unfamiliar region and get to the bottom of the peculiar megalodon behavior. Someone in the group mutters an exasperated comment saying, this is a real head scratcher, mark my words. Finally, Jumping has an epiphany. The megalodons are in the midst of their mating season and their instincts have led them here. Just as this revelation sinks in, S reports that the scanners have picked up an unusual structure on the ocean floor. Initially, everyone assumes it's the remains of a sunken ship, but Rias suspects it might be more like a deep sea station. After a thorough scan of the object, they conclude that it's an incredibly advanced structure. Suddenly, their sonar detects a sub above them. 
It's a group of researchers led by Monas, hunting for resources illegally. As they work, the team notices unknown objects nearby. They realize they've found the Manawan crew, who've uncovered their hidden station. In a panic, Monas destroys evidence and triggers explosives set by his team. Despite a desperate plea, it's too late. An explosion causes a rock slide, and Monas tries to flee. Meanwhile, Jess spots a thermocline rupture, creating a big hole, letting multiple megalodons surface. Jonas and Jumping Sub sustain serious damage from the falling debris, and they quickly lose contact with the Mana One crew. Mac instructs Jess to get a rescue submersible ready for a search mission to locate the missing crew. However, Jess soon reports a malfunction in the submersible, suspecting that someone deliberately tampered with the battery unit. She fears that it won't be possible to fix the problem. Meanwhile, Jonas's submersible crew regains consciousness, realizing they've lost communication, oxygen, and heating. Rias fixes the communication device. Jonas contacts Mac, saying they'll don exosuits for retrieval. But Mac delivers a grim message, rescue is impossible. Jonas decides to proceed on foot, despite Mac's concerns about exosuit dangers and limited oxygen. Jonas is resolute, saying, the team's gone, and I won't lose the rest. Jonas and his team exit the submersible, and to their surprise, they find Jumping and the others who have miraculously survived. They press on with their journey across the uncharted ocean floor towards the station, while Mac instructs Jess and DJ to track down the saboteur as quickly as possible. The team moves cautiously underwater, but then, out of nowhere, something grabs Lance, and he vanishes from sight in an instant. Shortly after this grim discovery, the crew finds Lance's helmet, confirming his death. With heavy hearts, they must continue their journey. Meanwhile, on the damaged submersible, Monas contacts his accomplice, Hillary, the same person from the Oceanic Institute event. Mones updates her on the destruction of the Mana One crew, but Hillary knows they're still alive. She warns Mones that reaching the station will bring serious trouble at Mana One. Back on the surface, DJ informs Mac that someone has destroyed all the surveillance camera footage, making their investigation more challenging. Mac, however, reassures the team that all the data is transmitted via satellite, so they can still access copies. As the team continues their deep-sea journey, they have roughly 400 meters left to cover. But suddenly, Jumping and Jonas notice suspicious movement nearby. The team quickly orders everyone to run for their lives as prehistoric creatures, the same kind that the T-Rex hunted millions of years ago, approach them at breakneck speed. The team tries to open fire on the predators, but their sheer numbers make it an impossible battle. Jumping seizes a signal flare and uses its bright light to repel the predators. However, this attracts the attention of the Megalodons. Thinking quickly, Jonas tosses a flare onto a steel structure, grabbing the Megalodon's attention, allowing the team to flee toward the station. Unfortunately, a Megalodon keeps chasing Juming and S with S low on oxygen. She sacrifices herself to buy time for Juming to hide from the predator. They reach the station, trying to seal the airlock, but the relentless Megalodon attacks. Earlier, Curtis's helmet visor cracked from predator attacks, and just before sealing the compartment, it fails under pressure. The survivors continue deeper into the station, finding a corporation illegally mining gems and metals, sending them to the surface in specialized capsules. Maying manages to establish communication with Mana One, and Jonas informs Jess about their losses and fills her in on the station's discovery. The team continues their journey, and suddenly, Jumping stumbles upon his research, inexplicably present on the station. Reaching the escape capsules, they discover malfunctioning ones. Suddenly, the door behind them closes, and Jess contacts them, now in control of the station and locking them inside. She destroys the rescue capsules. In a surprising twist, Jess asks Rias to save Maying by shooting Jonas, but Rias can't do it. Jess then releases the last capsule, Hillary contacts the team, planning to exploit the ocean's resources for profit. She floods the compartment. Jonas decides to swim outside without a hydro suit to disconnect communication with the surface. Rias suggests holding water in their mouths to survive 30 seconds under pressure, which Jonas tries. He enters the open ocean, encountering a megalodon. A reptilian creature attacks, but Jonas fights back, gaining control of the station. Jonas loses consciousness but survives. He awakens to find Monez seeking revenge. They engage in a fierce battle as the compartment floods. Jonas defeats Monez, opens the compartment, and rescues his comrades. 
Simultaneously, three helicopters approach Mana 1, under Hillary's orders, aiming to clear the station. Mac gains access to backup copies and discovers that Jess is the traitor. Jonas and the team intend to escape using Moans' submarine, but they realize they need to distract the Megalodons. In a daring move, Juming decided to activate all the station's lights to slip away unnoticed. He left the submersible and hurried to the computers, using a powerful light to blind the menacing creatures. Within moments, the Megalodons swarmed the station, and Juming narrowly evaded their strongest attack. As the sub shook violently, Rias prepared to seal the hatch, but Jonas trusted Juming to make it. Just in time, Juming leaped into the hatch, and they ascended from the ocean floor. In the thermocline, Juming found explosives on board, and a breach in the thermal layer caused by the explosions, which was closing. They hoped the Megalodons couldn't follow. However, at that moment, a horrifying creature emerged from the depths behind them. Meanwhile, Monas was still alive and rose to the surface with the assistance of an inflatable balloon on Mono 1. DJ and Mac remained in the backup center, and suddenly, Jess, along with several mercenaries, pounded on the door. Mac was convinced that these individuals intended to kill them, and DJ devised a plan. Out of the blue, they swung the door open and unleashed pepper spray into the faces of the intruders, quickly incapacitating them with a taser. Seizing the opportunity, they made their escape. Meanwhile, Jonas, Rigus, Juming, and Maying reached Mana 1, but spotted unfamiliar figures on the deck. Jonas suggested finding Mac and DJ, and assigned Raz to scout for a boat or any useful resources. Mac and DJ eventually emerged on the deck, only to be ambushed by more mercenaries. DJ, however, knew how to handle the situation. DJ, what the heck? Mac exclaimed. But as even more armed men appeared and opened fire, Mac and DJ had no choice but to dive into the water to evade the bullets. Upon returning to the ship, DJ pulled a gun from his backpack, surprising Mac. However, their respite was short-lived as the mercenaries captured them. Just then, Juming emerged in the corridor, feigning being a hostage, and began speaking in Chinese, which none of the mercenaries understood. This distraction allowed Jonas to launch an attack. Meanwhile, Monas reached the control center, where he encountered Jess and the others. He reported that Jonas was still alive and on Mono 1. Jess ordered the mercenaries to sweep the station and eliminate the team. Meng and Raz readied a rescue boat when they suddenly noticed three megalodons approaching the station. They managed to reach the surface just before the breach sealed. Jess and Hillary discussed the situation over a video link. Hillary then offered Maying a promotion, appointing her as the head of the Institute. Suddenly, Hillary noticed the Megalodon coming dangerously close to the control center. Jess reassured her that the glass could withstand any attack. However, the enormous creature proved otherwise. Moans escaped the control center, and the Mono One team was leaving, avoiding Megs's attention. Mercenaries on a lifeboat started the engine to reach Jonas. Monty told them to quiet the engines to avoid Megalodon detection. A mercenary aimed at Jonas, but their boat was suddenly swallowed by a Megalodon. Meanwhile, the team accelerated, and Jonas readied a harpoon with explosives in case they encountered the Megs. Juming noticed an inhabited fun island nearby, but the Megalodons might approach it without the unsuspecting people realizing. On the island and a nearby boat, vacationers were relaxing when an unknown creature suddenly attacked their vessel. Jonas and the team arrived at the island and urgently warned people to get out of the water, but they didn't take his words seriously. Moans, Hillary, and their mercenaries also landed on the island with the intention of eliminating Jonas. Enormous reptiles attacked Monty's group, and the Megalodons drew nearer to the shore. While waiting for the mercenaries in the helicopter, Hillary heard gunshots in the distance and decided to leave. She called for Moans and returned to the helicopter. Two snappers, lizard-like reptiles, ambushed Hillary, dragging her into the forest. The Mono One team split, with Jonas using a jet ski to lure the Megalodons away from the shore, planning to harpoon them. Monty's soldiers, along with Juming, Mac, Rias, and DJ, unintentionally found refuge together in a warehouse. Mercenaries took them hostage and planned to execute them. However, Juming spotted a button that opened the warehouse's front door, unleashing the snappers on the mercenaries. Seizing the opportunity, the Mono One team fled the warehouse, taking an explosives bag with them. Juming and Mac embarked on a mission to locate the helicopter, while DJ called for rescuers on the radio. Juming distracts the lizards, allowing Mac to reach the helicopter. The colossal reptiles closed in on Juming, but he narrowly escaped. After refueling, 
Juming sprayed the creatures from the helicopter while Mac used a rocket launcher to make the lizards explode. Simultaneously, Jonas, having already dealt with one megalodon, pursued the remaining ones. However, Monas opened fire on him. After a fierce battle, Jonas managed to defeat his enemy by pushing him directly into the jaws of a gigantic megalodon. An octopus suddenly goes on the attack, menacing those enjoying their time on the beach. Maying finds herself in a perilous situation, prompting Juming to leap into action and come to her rescue. However, the sea creature proves to be a formidable adversary, delivering a devastating blow that shatters the helicopter they're in. Juming grapples with the octopus, eventually managing to attach explosives to it. But to everyone's surprise, the creature survives. Just when things seem dire, another megalodon emerges from the depths, dragging the octopus away with it. Meanwhile, Juming and Mac remain in the water, facing yet another imminent threat. That's when Jonas appears, taking note of another nearby megalodon. He ingeniously uses the helicopter's rotor blades to fend off this new menace. Back on the beach, another monster, resembling a lizard, lurks dangerously close to Maying. Just as it's about to strike, DJ arrives on the scene, rescuing her. But the challenges aren't over yet. A third megalodon surfaces near Jonas, Jing, and Mac. Quick thinking on Juming's part allows them to narrowly evade this new threat, as Heiki, their trusted companion, follows Juming's commands and guides them to safety. Finally, the rescuers arrive on the island. With the joint efforts of the Mono team and the other survivors, they celebrate their hard-fought victory over the ocean monsters.